Hello, everyone. How wonderful is it that we get to talk photography and books? How privileged, how awesome, and how magical is that? Now, full disclosure, I am a complete idiot. I just did this film, which was probably 20 minutes long, and I had my cell phone too close to the recording setup, and I got feedback that I could not hear through the headphones. And it's ruined, and now I'm doing it again. So, before we go any further, someone reached out and said, hey, will you make an intro to book write film that's just about like the first, how to open the software, and then like the first three or four moves that you might make in the software. And I said, sure, I can do that. So, if you are offended by Blurb content, you can skip this film. If you already know how to use Blurb book write software, you can skip this film and I'll see you down the road. I've made 12 films in March already and I have two more that are already uploaded ready to go and I'm working on three more as we speak today, actually four more. So I am a filmmaking machine and remember people, it's not about quality, it's always about quantity. So for those of you who don't know, book write is, the, is what I would call the main course of Blurb software, it's free. You download it. You do not need to be online once it's loaded on your computer. You can work off-site. You could go to the park. You could go to a cafe, and you can design your book without having to upload anything until your book is done. It is a great piece of software, but it is a piece of software that needs to work for a very wide range of bookmaker. I love this software. I use it a lot. I have used it a lot, and I will continue to do so, but there are other options if you so choose, and I just want to touch on these briefly before we move further further into this little voyage. If you are, if you have design chops and you have a document that requires a lot of in intricate design, a lot of copy uh, complexity, then we also make a plugin for Adobe InDesign. And InDesign is like the Ferrari of design applications. I'm a little bit terrified of it. When I drive Adobe InDesign, I'm like those guys in the YouTube videos where they're driving exotic cars and they crash like 30 yards outside of the parking lot when they're trying to show off. That's what happens when I use Adobe InDesign. I typically go beyond my comfort zone in design, and I can see the people who know design like covering their mouth and chuckling at my attempts, but it's here if you want it. We also make Lightroom. If you love yourself some Lightroom, then you can make a book through the book module in Lightroom. I've done this a couple of times, but as I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something in a minute. I am gonna do something incredibly dangerous in a minute that involves Lightroom, and so, I'm going to skip over this right now because I've made books in Lightroom, but I still prefer to use BookWrite. And then finally, let's say that you're one of these people that's sitting around with a pile of PDFs and you're like, I'm stockpiling PDFs because I can, and I just want to print a book. You can take your PDF and just upload your PDF to book through the Blurb site as well. So that is the final option. But we are talking today about Blurb BookWrite. But before we get to BookWrite, as I mentioned, I am going to do something wildly dangerous. My, my cursor and my beautiful little red circle here that I've done for your viewing pleasure is hovering over Lightroom Classic, and yes, I've opened Lightroom. Now, before we go any further, I need this in all caps. I need you to stop what you're doing, and I need you to listen. Under no circumstances should you do what I do in Lightroom. I do not know what I'm doing in Lightroom, and I've used this program for years. Here's my, my reasoning behind that. I don't love software. I don't love tweaking digital files. I don't sit and look at an image all day long making tweaks in Lightroom and then sharing it with someone else or comparing. I just don't, it's not my thing, right? I love the imagery. I love making the imagery more than anything else, but my, my philosophy about software is this. One word, efficiency. I have to be as efficient as humanly possible because I have so much on my plate to get through. The reason I can make 12, 14, 15 films in a month is because I'm very efficient in what I'm doing, or at least approximating efficiency. So what I've done here is I've clicked on a folder of van life images because these are the ones I'm going to use for this pseudo fake test slash book I'm about to show you because I just want to give you a couple of heads up about uh, features in BookWrite. But a lot of people are confused about how you get images from something like Lightroom. And there are multiple ways of getting from A to B. I could import directly from BookWrite. I could import from Lightroom, but I'm not going to. I'm going to show you my workflow. And again, it's my workflow and Lightroom, the people who are really geeky on this stuff, they will probably take offense to every single thing I'm about to show you, but that's okay because it's, again, my workflow doesn't have to be yours. So 
I go through these images initially and I, and I edit them. But the first thing I do before I do any editing is I select all and I go over here to my presets and I go down to user presets and I apply a preset. Now the, the preset that I apply first is called F Kodak Gold 100. The grand total of presets that I use and have are right here, three. I have a color, Kodak Gold, I have a split tone test that I did for a client that I haven't used in five years, and I have a, what's called Zeller Noir, and this is a black and white preset. I'm not saying these are good. I'm not saying you should use these. These are just the three that I have. That is the grand total. So that tells you how much thought I'm putting into this, which is minimal. I select all, and I apply the Kodak Gold 100 preset. The reason I do that is that digital files out of the camera, to me, are useless. Digital files need to be tweaked and prepped and cleaned up. And a preset for me is the first step in that process. But here's the reality. If I click on a single one of these images, let's take this incredible action shot of me in the field, which might, I don't know, maybe you're crying now after seeing this. It's so powerful. Crying is normal. I've got my super cool desert stripe camo pants. I've got my boulder boots. I've got my Beyond jacket and my Fuji X-T4 with the 50 to 1428, I think, with a 2x converter. And by the way, right after I, my wife shot this picture, I made a picture that, that is in the book that I'm about to show you. This image, even though it has a preset on it, is nowhere near being right. Look how flat it is. The blacks aren't blacks. The white's not white. The contrast isn't right. The color isn't right. And this is after the preset. So the preset was like step one. I would have to basically, if this was one of my edits, I would probably open this in Photoshop and work on it a little bit. I could do some adjustments here in Lightroom, which I might, but I'm going to show you something else later that is also equally helpful. So however you do this is fine. Yeah, people love this part of the process. I know photographers who love processing film more than taking pictures, and I would equate this to being the digital version of that that they much prefer to tweak files all day long than they do actually making them in the field. That's not me. So the next step that I do is I go through, and all the ones that are my selects or my edits, I one-star them. Now, I do a one-star because then it leaves me room up above for, for further refinement. Let's say that one of these pictures is just absolutely stellar, and I'm like, this is maybe the best thing I've ever seen in my life, and now I'm crying. I might two-star that. I don't remember the last time I did a four or five star image because then there's no room on top of that. Once you're a five star, where do you go from there? So I just keep it simple. Then I go up to attribute and I just, I, let's say that I had attribute unselected, which is what I should have done here. So now I've got many more images in the folder, but I've already gone through and I've one starred these. Then I go to attribute and I hit one star and that just selects those. Those are, those are my selects from this. Then I would select all, I would hit export and I would put them in a subfolder like Van Life 4. I would give them custom names, Milner, New Mexico, whatever. I would keep it JPEG, sRGB, because that's what Blurb is going to want. Uh, I would resize it. So I resize my images for a Blurb book to slightly larger than what I'm going to need in the book. If I'm doing an 8x10, then I would make my images, let's say, 1114 at 300 DPI resolution. You could do 240 if, you're, if that's your game. Uh, either one will work. I prefer 300, and it's just like the pattern I've been in for years. And I would make these, uh, you know, 5,000 pixels wide or whatever, just to make sure that the software is not interpolating my images up, that I'm giving the software plenty of data to work with. I do very, very, very little sharpening. I think digital files are sharp enough as they are, and when I see files that are over-sharpened, it looks like too much plastic surgery. It's scary. So I just leave it. And then I would hit export, which I'm not going to do because I've already done it. Because remember, this is a pseudo test that I'm showing you. And here's my folder of images right here. These are all my selects that I've gone through and exported. And they are all just fancy and happy and ready to be imported. So I would go over here next to book, right? I would click on it. And then you could do the da 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 until it opens. And now it's like a warm cup of cocoa. You've got welcome to book, right? It's like me reaching out to shake your hand, saying, welcome, come on in, it's book right. Now, here is my actual Van Life Layflat test book that if you watched my film from last week, you will know this is, the, this is the actual document that that book is. Here is my Albania magazine document. I'm about to do a film about me returning to Albania in September to teach in the, of this year, 2021. We're going to go back and I'm going to co-teach a class. And I'm going to do a film about this project and how I did it. But today, this does not serve our purpose. I'm going to go up here to create. 
I'm going to hit create, and what you're faced with is this next pop-up window, which gives you the option of making a wall art. Nope, we're going to skip it. We're going to go here to books and magazines. You can do quick design, which basically is saying, hey, design it for me, and I'll drag and drop the pics in. So if you want to do that, and for a lot of people, that is a great place to start, because remember, you can have it designed for you and then go back in and modify the designs yourself afterwards. It's a pretty slick thing. I'm going to do pro design. Because after all, as we all know, I'm such a pro. Hit next. I'm going to randomly choose 8x10 portrait. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to choose a paper. Let's do luster. I'm going to choose an image wrap cover. It's going to be 41 bucks, basically. And I can get a swatch kit here, by the way, if I want one. I've already got one because I work for Blurb. Next, I'm going to title this, as we always do with these, test. And I'm going to just save it on the desktop so I can find it and throw it away. As soon as this test is over... Start new project, and then you wait. Da, 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 da. Okay, next pop-up screen says, where do you want to get your photos from? Now, look at here, looky here, looky here, Lightroom, Dropbox, Facebook, SmugMug, Flickr, import. I'm not going to do that because we all know my folder of images is on the desktop. I'm going to hit select photos right here. And lo and behold, it's already selected my Van Life Blurb Lay Flat. Now, I'm not going to import all these because this is a test, but all I'd have to do is select whatever ones I want, and then I hit open. And then the software will grind, and it will bring these babies in right across the top. Okay, this begins our official book right education portion of the, of the presentation. You can have the software place all the images for you. I mean, it's slick, it's fast, it's easy, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say no, I'm going to place them myself, and boom, the software now leaves me alone. Now I can do whatever I want. Let me look and see what I actually imported here. Hopefully there's something good. Okay, this is how I view this software. I see it as a, a, a pattern of power spots. My first power spot is in the upper left, my covers tab, my pages tab, my add pages button, where I can add at the beginning or end or anywhere in the spread. I've got my trash pages spread if I need to take pages out. I've got my page numbers. I've got my page background color if I want to set that. Be careful with setting background colors. A lot of people who get started in books think to themselves, I'm going to make all my pages black because it's really moody and I'm, I'm serious and I wear a scarf. Well, the problem is if I go to my bookshelf with traditionally published photo books and I have, let's say, 500 books in my collection, I would say there's six in the collection that have pages that are not white. So just think about that. A colored background is not the end of the world, but it can also be a very hard sell. So sticking with white in my opinion, especially when you're first getting started, is a good idea. So that was the first power spot. Second power spot is right here with my layouts, my photographs, and my text files. These are buttons you're going to use all the time. Now, the person who wrote in and asked me about doing this film that I'm doing right now actually said, I have an RTF file. Well, this is where you would import that. You would go right here to add RTF files. You would press this button, and it would say, where's your file? and you select your RTF file, and it would come in just like we brought in our photograph. So that's where you would do that. Your photos, if I need to import more, I go right back here and hit this plus button again. And this is where I, found my lay my, I find my layouts, and this is what I want to talk about here. So I'm going to hit this spread here, and I'm going to go to the layouts, and right here under this little dropdown, I've got my layouts if I want to build a custom layout. I've got spread layouts, one photo, two, three, four, five, photo and text. This is where I find all of my layouts. But I'm going to go to spread, and I'm just going to drag this double truck down here. And now, as you see, this selected, it says drag an image here. I can go back to photographs, and I can drag an image in. Now, I could have double-clicked on that image as well, but I just dragged it because I like manual labor. I like clicking and dragging. And let's do another one because we can. I'm going to go, I'm going to select the next spread in line back to layouts, drag this in, back to photos, and drag in a super macho action shot of me. Take it in, people. Take it in. Okay, so there we are. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is a button, not a power spot. We had our first power spot up here. We had our second power spot here. We're going to get to our third power spot and our fourth power spot. But before we do that, check this out. If I click on an image, it brings up a control panel that allows me to basically do anything I want to this image. I can move it forward, bring it back. I can fit to frame, fill to frame. I can put a shape on it. I can change the size, transform it, flip it, put a border on it. 
all of this. I can zoom it, <clears throat> but there is a button that gets lost and forgotten down here at the bottom that is very important, and it's called Enhance Image. And watch what happens when I hit this. Now, watch when I toggle. Off, on, off. Look how flat that image is. That image looks pretty good, but the software is saying that's flat. Now watch, look at that contrast, that little bit of pop. How I would describe the Image Enhance button is a preset, a Lightroom preset built into BookWrite. And this is saying to you, the software seems to think that that is the best way for that image to print. Now, this is a really wonderful tool for a lot of you because one of the biggest mistakes I see with BookWrite or any other bookmaking software is that people sit in front of their monitors with the brightness turned all the way up. And they look at these beautiful images on these beautiful monitors that are pushing so much light through these images, and they say, oh, this is going to print amazing. And then they put it in a book, and they print it, and it comes out dark. Because there is no printer-paper combination on Earth that can reproduce the look you get from looking at a monitor. Because the color gamut on a monitor is so far outside the color gamut of paper that you have to, you have to compress and get things in the bounds, within bounds of that paper. This is a great button. I don't always use it. I don't always finally go to print with it, but I use it on every image to see what the software is telling me. What is the software suggesting? So again, that's it. Now check this out. Let's go to this other image. You can see how flat that baby is. This is going to be dramatic. Watch this. Bam! Shazam! Okay, so off, on, off, on. That is a huge difference. Look how much it lit up the midtones. Look at the contrast. Look at the pop that that image has now before I had that button on. That's a button I know that you will use and love and like, which is why I wanted to show you. Okay, we're moving on to a couple of things here, and this is we're coming to the end of our little presentation. But one of the things I see all the time is I see one image on a page photo books. I see people doing photography books that have a single image on a page, and I'm going to go up here to layouts, and I'm going to go to one image on a spread, and I'm going to drag this down here, back to my photos, and I'm going to look for a vertical. And here's one. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to go back to the image enhance. Boom. Watch that pop a little bit. I think that looks okay. And I see this is the, the so okay, recap again. One power spot, two power spot, three is over here. This has info, preview, upload. I love the preview button. Preview button cleans up the real estate, lets me walk through what I have very clearly and easily. I see a lot of books that look like this. A lot of people making photo books, one, one image on a page. Now, there's an upside to this. The upside is when someone turns this page and sees this spread, the only thing they have to look at is a photograph, which is a great thing. Because if you're saying my photograph is really good and really important and I only want you to look at it, then this is effective. If you add a second element to this page, a page number, a caption, anything, you are asking the viewer to do two things at once. You're asking them to deal with a page number or a caption and deal with your photograph. You are actually taking attention away from your photo. And I say that because so many people have come to me and said, well, I know I have to use page numbers. No, you don't. Well, I know I have to do captions. No, you don't. You can do all that stuff in the back in an index if you feel you have to do it, but you do not because you're competing with your actual imagery. So keep that in mind. Let's go back to the project. And here's what I want you to do. This is a homework assignment. I want you to, and this is where we're going to come to our fourth power spot. We got one, we got two, we got three, and we got four, which is your toolbar right here. Your homework assignment is to do a one image on a page on a spread like this, and then I want you to add two secondary elements. Now, you can do that in a variety of ways. I can click on this first tool, which is a photo box, and I can drag and drop, and I can put something in the photo box like this, if, if I so choose to, to do that. I'm going to take that away. Or I can do a text box, and I can do this, and I can start writing a bunch of gibberish in here, and I'm going to leave this one because I think this is having a text element on the page is, is a good idea. And I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I can move this text box around. And then here, the third tool here is the shape tools. Now, I never in my life thought I would ever use the shape tools. And I actually use them all the time. I don't typically use them in the middle of the book in spreads. 
but I use them at the beginning of the book in what's called the front matter. And I use them at the begin the end of the book in what's called the back matter. And these are places where you see things like introductions, essays, dedications, tables of contents, uh, on and on. So let's say I want the tech, the shape tool and I'm going to choose a triangle and I'm going to drag and drop this. And then I'm going to, let me find what else. Do I have any other macho photos of me that I can use? Please, I never get tired of those. Yes, here's another one. I'm going to drag this one in, into the shape. And if I go up to preview now, I've got a complete disaster of a spread. But my point is, I want you to start practicing with multiple elements on the page. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to drag this. I'm going to go here. Well, let me move the text over here. Let's say I move my text over here. I'm going to select this image now and I'm going to send it backwards and I'm going to move this and let's say I'm going to bleed this off a little bit just for fun. And let me go back to preview. You see my point. I'm moving things around. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go back to my text. Maybe I'll put my text here. I'll put this here and let me, uh, let me just have a look here. Again, I am just playing to see. This looks terrible. Don't think for any second I would ever make a spread like this. My point is to get you to think about multiple elements on the page without totally distracting from the image. I think these are, these are things that work really well, again, at the beginning of the book, at the end of the book, and they just add a little, a little bit of sophistication because here's the thing. And again, I'm going to repeat this one more time so that I cut off the people making comments about how horrible this spread looks. A lot of these single image photography books only appeal to other photographers because the general public looks and is not so sucked in by the photographs. They need a story. They need something else to help them engage with the work. And that is where doing something like taking a a shape tool here, doing a circle, maybe dragging this here and doing something here. And then again, this is kind of a weirdo spread. And then taking a tech piece of text and writing like a subtitle in here. And then having this as like a little, a little page that sort of gets people's attention before they get into the meat of the project. Again, if you have not used BookWrite, open BookWrite, select a, a folder of images and test and play and do not print what you're doing. This whole thing is about test driving. So let me just finish with this. In the grand scheme of software, we have things like Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and my least favorite program on earth, Microsoft Excel. All of those programs are exponentially more complicated than Blurred BookWrite. Blurred BookWrite, if you have not used it, will simply require a test drive. It'll require exactly what I just showed you before you feel confident to use the, the program. And here's the thing about software. Again, efficiency. A good piece of software does nothing but help you facilitate your vision. If a piece of software is in the middle and is holding you back, then you know it's not a great piece of software. You want to sit down at the computer with a vision and never have to think about the software. You should be familiar with it enough to when uh, you, these tools and movements are happening subliminally because you are focused primarily on your vision. That's the goal. So I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions about this or this is confusing or there are things you like or don't like, just let me know because, again, I work for Blurb. I have to talk about BookRide all the time. I've used it a zillion times. I know the limitations of the software. And if I can help you in any way, I will. And I will be back again with a, another film. Let's see.